you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Well, hello there. This is going to be a really chill, chatty, draw with me kind of video while I plan some paintings and work on some rough sketches. So grab whatever you want to work on and let's just hang out together. I normally do very little preparation for my oil paintings. I usually go out, I'll go on a hike, have a little adventure, bring my camera with me, take some reference photos, or I'll find something online. But once I've done that, all I do is I load it up into Photoshop, I slap a grid on it, and I just get started. I don't usually do any kind of like studies beforehand in oil or gouache or in my sketchbook. I don't usually do any drawings beforehand. Um, I usually just like jump right into <laughs> right into full color, right into like the oil painting sketch. But like a lot of artists, I have a whole stash of unfinished sketchbooks. And this past week, I didn't really have time to do a whole painting. So I thought we'd work on some sketches together and actually like, you know, start planning out some various things and trying to like work through some concepts. I just recently got back from a really amazing trip to Switzerland. I was at Creator Camp, which was this really amazing, creatively invigorating event where um, we were all flown out to Switzerland. There were like 85 creators, people like Unjaded Jade, American Baron, Joelle Roche, Tiffany Tan, aka Apple Cheeks, uh, Kate Weinberg, Mylene's Mind, uh, Wholesome Simon, a ton of really cool people that I was really, really just honored to meet and Brooke Cormier, we got to hang out again. And um, yeah, it was it was a really great trip. And I took quite a few photos and saw some really amazing landscapes that I really want to turn into paintings. There will be a whole video on my trip and the art that I'm going to make from it coming very soon, but it's not quite ready yet. Switzerland, oh my god, it was just so gorgeous. I, I feel so blessed to have been able to go. And now that I'm back home, all I can honestly think about is how I can just go back. For a landscape painter like me, it was it was just incredible. It was heaven on earth. It was like everywhere that I looked, there was something new that I wanted to paint. I need to figure out how to go back and how to spend more time there. My only complaint about Creator Camp is that it was too short. But now that I'm back home, filled with all of this really great creative energy, I want to do something I don't normally do and actually do some planning before I dive into new paintings. I have been really liking the work that I've been making lately. Um, if you guys have watched my recent videos, uh, the paintings I've been making, uh, the little tree painting that I did, um, like the rocky forest scene that I've been working on, I'm really proud of these paintings. I feel like I am slowly but surely really finding my own voice as an artist and I'm improving my skill set and I'm really happy about all of that. And I want to keep this momentum going. And I think for me, I'm a little nervous about jumping into something again and then not liking it and then getting into a funk, which has happened to me before. So I want to be a little more deliberate and plan things out and work through some concepts and then allow myself to kind of retreat from the world and just make art for a little bit. But I want to plan things out first. So if you've been watching some of my recent art focused videos, especially my I've Girl Bossed Too Close to the Sun video, you'll know that I have a ton of newly prepped panels to work on in my studio. I've got some round panels, some ovals, some cool arched panels, and rectangles and squares of all sizes, all ratios. It's a lot. I have a lot of stuff to work on. Um, I've loved circle panels in particular since I used to do abstract acrylic artwork like a million years ago now, but it's just been my favorite format for so long. I always love working on like non-standard shapes and it seems like every shape and aspect ratio demands a little bit of like a different composition. Um, like when you are composing a square painting, you can't, you know, compose a circle painting the same way. So we are starting out this little sketching session with some cute tree doodles and then we're moving on to some landscape stuff later on but i really really love landscapes i 
I am a landscape painter through and through. I always get asked by friends and family to try figurative stuff, and it's just not my thing. For me, I love a cool tree. You guys know this about me. I love a cool tree. I love some cool rocks. I love trying to figure out grass. To me, it's just really fun. It's really special. I like being able to explore the natural world, um, go on hikes with my partner and my friends, and just explore just the beauty of the world all around us and figure out ways um, to express myself through that. I always feel very connected to the reference photos that I take myself. I really struggle uh, working from photo reference that I find online. I Maybe I'm just really picky and it's just not like the right angle that I want or it's too edited or something, but I always find it much, much easier to paint using reference that I've taken myself. This is part of the reason why I think I've just never been able to um, use AI in my workflow. I mean, one, I've never wanted to, like I don't have that desire. I feel like in some ways, you know, it's unethical, of course, but it's also just like not fulfilling in the same way. But I just like AI reference photos and AI generated images just have like a certain look to them that for me just like takes all of the fun out of making art in the first place. And I personally just really enjoy having to go on hikes and live my life in order to like find the stuff that I want to make art out of. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry. Let's get back into these sketches really quick. We are now working on a little mountain landscape-y kind of sketch of Sauce V, Switzerland. So originally Creator Camp was supposed to be held in Sauce Fee. There was unfortunately some kind of rock slide landslide situation that wiped out the only road. I'm sorry about the road noise. Um, that wiped out the only road into that village. Um, so we couldn't actually go. This sketch was done a little before my trip. So you're kind of seeing two sketchbook sessions happening here. Um, it's a very nice sweeping vista. There's this road that's kind of snaking through the mountains and into this valley. I find the Switzerland mountains to be very compelling. They're not super jagged or something. I love how just gentle the hills become and how green everything is. I think just the color of the rocks is something that I also really like. Yeah, I find the the rolling hill mountainy areas of Europe to be super interesting subjects and I gotta get out there more. I gotta do more stuff. I gotta do more like travel art painting content. Uh, I do have this um, weekend painting workshop thing booked um, in a couple weeks in Carmel, California. I'm really excited for that. I really just want to do more plein air painting um, but like destination planner painting, you know what I mean? Like I want to go somewhere cool. I don't like painting in public in a city. Um, I don't like being observed in the same way. I know that sounds so weird coming from a YouTuber, but it's like, it's just a different thing. Like you guys can observe me and that's fine because you're not here in the same room as me. It's, it's a very different vibe. Anyway, we are wrapping up this little sketch. I really love just working on mountains. I don't know. I. It's really fun for me doing these little sketches. It's not something that I do every day. I should really do it more. I normally just like, again, diving straight into paintings, but I feel like I should do more pencil work. Maybe this is a, this is a step in a new direction for me. So we are starting a new sketch, brand new page. Uh, this is somewhere else in Switzerland. I forget exactly where this might be, Leukerbad. Um, I think this is a reference photo that I found online. And not one that I took myself. Wow, there's a lot of road noise. I'm so sorry about that. This is a reference photo that I found online for sure. But this one had a lot of trees, a lot of individual trees. I am less confident this one will turn into a big painting just because personally, I've never been very called to do the big sweeping landscape kind of landscape paintings. That's not usually my thing. I like to zoom in. I like to do like little vignettes, like an individual like outcropping of rocks or a really cool tree or I don't know, something smaller. I find it very challenging to convey the kind of like spatial depth with color that 
big sweeping vistas like the one I'm sketching right now kind of require. It's just never really been a thing that I'm super interested in. Maybe it's a skill issue. That would be a totally fair critique of my lack of interest. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. There's there's an angularity to these mountains that I think works well in graphite, but maybe not. Maybe wouldn't work quite as well um, in oil paint. So we will switch to small thumbnail paintings pretty shortly here. Ever since I've come back, I have continued reading Slow Productivity by Cal Newport. My review video of that book is coming eventually. I'm still working through it and I also want to make a very comprehensive video about it and do maybe some changes to the way that I think about time management in response to the things that I'm learning in that book, but that video will be coming eventually. It's been really interesting coming back from this trip and feeling so inspired but also having so much stuff on my plate as a one-person business like I have no one working under me no virtual assistant um, no one to manage brand deals for me no editor I don't really have an interest in having those things but it does mean that I have a lot of stuff that I have to do every single day and every single week for my business um, and it's I don't know, like, like with any business, right? It's just a challenge to get everything done. Uh, and ultimately, I just want to spend hours every day making art. Or at least I want to have periods of my life where I can do that. And so I've been thinking a lot about how I can structure things in a more sustainable way for me. Um, I do have, like, chronic fatigue and some medical issues. It's a part of the reason why I haven't been as active lately. I've just been going through some stuff <laughs> medical-wise. I don't really want to get into it. But it's getting better. We are taking actions, things are improving, but yeah, it's just a lot to manage. And I'm trying to think about how I can ultimately make things more sustainable for me. Um, okay, now we are working on some of these little circle thumbnails. This one is of a rock that I saw in Ligurbad on the way to my hotel. So. There was a lot that we did at Creator Camp. Uh, I hung out with Jack Conti, CEO of Patreon, and he did like some keynote speeches. I made a short film with some amazing people like Joelle Roche, Edgy Katrina, and Unjaded Jade. We made this really amazing short film that I'm super proud of. It's kind of like a yoga, um, like a yoga trail. Yeah. This rock was, um, yeah, on the way to my hotel, we would walk around like about every single day, and I saw this rock all the time. It was very rainy while we were in Switzerland. Um, it was often very rainy, very wet, very cloudy. But I kept walking by this rock, and I kept like seeing it from all these different angles. And I don't know, I was just, there's something very interesting about it. I don't know, I kind of like it. It's very angular, got a lot going on, but it had all of this um, lichen and like moss growing all over it. Very popular, I guess, to happen to rocks in Switzerland, especially where we were in the mountains. And it was just really cool. Um, yeah, so I took a picture of it, took a picture of it, brought it. So I took a picture of it, loaded it up into Photoshop, did a little bit of some sketches here. I'm inserting some more rocks into the background here because this rock was just like on the side of the road. It was not in a particularly picturesque spot, but it was surrounded by this very lush grass. So I do add that in the foreground in just a second here. I'm really thinking that this could be a painting. I'm really, really thinking about it. I think it could work. I don't love what I did with the background in this particular sketch. I think maybe like I muddied the waters a little bit value wise, but there are things that we can still troubleshoot here. Um, I, I do, I do like this. I think there is something here. I really like all of these sketches, all of these thumbnail sketches. I think they're all really promising. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's nice to do prep work like this. It's nice to, to try something new because I don't usually do stuff like this, like I said. Yeah, I'm just adding a little bit like some extra rocks from my imagination in the background here, just trying to come up with like some kind of better environment for this rock to exist aside from just like you know the road that would otherwise be in the background but yeah i'm thinking a lot about time management lately it's a thing that every artist struggles with right like there's just so much that we have to do as a part of just our business and sharing our work and making our work it seems like there's always just a never-ending list of tasks that have to be done and way too few hours in the day to actually do them. I don't know, like as tempted as I am to explore other platforms, I do ultimately have to just like honor my energy level and 
the commitments that I've already made. And I don't know, like, I always say this, but everything that I do that's not art takes time away from art. So you have to just be constantly vigilant of that. I did a poll recently on my community tab asking people what their least um, hated social media platform was, like what platform they hate the least. And lots of folks said YouTube. Um, and there were a surprising amount of people that commented Tumblr. I use Tumblr as a consumer for like creative writing inspiration and stuff, but I was really surprised that people, I don't know, are still active on Tumblr. I thought I was like the only one that still like scrolled through Tumblr sometimes. Um, it's cool to see how unchanged the platform is. It's like 2014. I don't know. I just remember like the super hulak days and the times were like supernatural, like ruled Tumblr with an iron fist. And it's cool to see like how the platform has evolved just like a little bit, but still is kind of fundamentally the same. It's interesting. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about if it's possible for me, like just time management, like viability scheduling wise to explore another platform and what platform I would choose if I were to do that. But I do really like just being on YouTube. It's so simple. There's something so freeing about just having one thing to do, marketing-wise, every single week. And I do want to add like an email newsletter on top of that. You should join mine, by the way. It's linked in the description. But it would be nice to have a more frequently updated portfolio of my work on the internet because I only photograph and scan my artwork every couple months. Because, I don't know, once again, I'm like the only person doing this, right? So it's like, yeah, I could scan my work and photograph it every week as I finish stuff. Or I could, you know, batch that and do it later and, you know, have time to do other things like live my life and make more art. Um, okay, this is a painting that I'm actually really excited about, this, this sketch here. This was taken um, kind of in the process of shooting that short film that I mentioned. So Joel Roche and Andre de Jade and I, we went to this... Um, little like yoga trail thing and while we were shooting that film Joel did most of the shooting he's a great videographer and Jade was the on-camera talent I was just kind of floating in the background doing some production stuff like brainstorming angles and just kind of helping out a little bit we saw this really cool rocker I saw this really cool rock I think they were they were busy doing other things but I saw this really cool rock um covered in moss surrounded by some trees and like some sticks. I took a picture of it. I posted it on my community tab. I'm really happy and like excited by this picture, but I'm a little bit nervous about turning it into a painting because I'm not sure if like it's legible enough as a rock. Like it's, it's completely covered in moss and I don't know I'm a little bit insecure if I have like the skills to paint something so mossy and then also still have it read as a rock. So I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about that. I might hold off slightly on turning that into a painting immediately. But then again, I just finished a painting um, of an like, you know, interior forest scene of a, you know, moss covered rock that was not as moss covered as that one but was pretty moss covered so maybe I'm like you know primed more than ever to make that happen I don't know I'm not sure about it this thumbnail sketch though which is horribly out of focus I'm so sorry about that the, the kind of drawback to filming so much on vintage lenses which I really do love filming on is that they're all manual focus and so if I forget to change focus I'm kind of screwed so a lot of these clips are a little bit out of focus and I feel really bad about that, but hopefully you don't mind too terribly. So this thumbnail sketch, I saw this tree in this pond kind of area in Zurich. I was there with Apple Cheeks, Mylene's Mind, and um, Lin Trong. We were hanging out in Zurich and we saw this very sunlight dappled tree scene. This really cool like little like park area by the lake in Zurich had this nice little pond, these cute stepping stones, but I really gravitated toward this particular tree. There was some very nice dappled sunlight on it, and then it kind of spilled over into the foreground. And there were these like these long kind of droopy tree branches filled with leaves and some dark trees kind of in the background. 
And so I'm blocking in those right now. And I do like how straightforward the value structure of this thumbnail sketch is and how clear it is also in the image, like the original reference that I took. I think if I had to guess, I would say this one would be the easiest painting to do out of all the thumbnail sketches that we work on. I think this would be the most straightforward. And I do like the organic shapes that I was able to make with these tree branches. I think I think that's kind of promising and I do like the way that looks. Um, but yeah, I think I should really do more thumbnail sketches. I think it's really valuable to figure out this stuff before you commit to a painting. I, I'm going to be totally honest with you here. I abandoned a lot of paintings, a lot of paintings. I abandoned some that you see in my videos and I should really finish them. Maybe we could have a whole video just on me finishing, finishing all my works in progress. I start a lot of paintings that you guys don't even end up seeing on this channel just because I, I feel bad not finishing stuff. And I, I have like this kind of like shame surrounding it and I'm not sure if I should really share it, but I also feel like it's important to, to share the whole process, not just like the glamorous parts, like the successful parts. So I don't know. I'm still kind of working through some imposter syndrome stuff even on my own end, but this last thumbnail sketch that we work on together, this is a little bit of like a Frankenstein sketch. I found this reference also online. It's somewhere in Switzerland. I think I wrote down where it is in my sketchbook, but it's it's across the room. I don't want to get it, sorry. But I like how there's a lake coming in from the left-hand side into the foreground and kind of into the middle ground. And this um, patch of land, like these rocks that kind of snake in a little bit of like an S shape through the um, like the picture space, like the depth of it. And then we have the mountains in the background. I think this one is also very promising as a painting. I mean, all of these options are pretty good options to be clear. Uh, I think I do like the tree kind of focused one that you see on the left hand side um, of the frame right now the most, maybe? I don't know. But the one that we're currently working on that is, again, regrettably out of focus is, I think, really promising. I think there's something there, right? These little like rocky outcroppings near the water. And then we have the nice mountains in the background. That could be a nice little kind of experiment for me to test the waters on painting some of like the grand sweeping vistas that I mentioned earlier, like not super loving. I think maybe there's like some middle ground here, some gray area that we could explore a little bit more together. I I don't know. I just always like zooming in in my work. I just want to do a very kind of simple composition, focusing on the little texture changes and the little value and like hue shifts. And I love just doing the full tonal value range in my work. I love having black and I love having bright white. I love doing just like all of it. A lot of art instructors always used to urge me to like compress my value range, just focus on part of the spectrum, but I've never found that to be as compelling. I think it's really important to have just a really nice mix of values in your work. I always gravitate towards stuff that has really dark darks and really light lights. I feel like it's just more true to how you experience the world. Like I look out of my window right now and I see really dark shadows and really bright whites. And I think it's, I don't know, I think it's nice to have the mix of all of them. I think it makes it feel a little more realistic maybe in some ways. But yeah, we're winding down here. But I feel like we've done some really productive work in this sketchbook session. So thank you for watching and tagging along with me in this little journey. I hope that you got some productive stuff done on your end. And I'll pick one of these sketches to turn into a painting and you'll see that pretty soon here. So yeah, um, before I let you go, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace, which has been just an incredible creative partner for me. And I've been using them for years to host my own website as an artist. Squarespace is really just the perfect all-in-one platform for any artists and entrepreneurs looking to stand out and succeed online. Their fluid engine system makes designing a beautiful website as easy as dragging and dropping. And you can keep in touch with your audience outside of a social media algorithm using their email marketing tools. 
and sell anything from physical and digital products to an online course to your time all in one place. I personally love designing websites and I completely redesign my website a few times a year and Squarespace makes it really easy to do that. I can change the entire color scheme of my website in just a few clicks and switch things up with any of their professionally designed award-winning templates. Squarespace has a few new features that I am really excited about. You can now further streamline your site with their new built-in payment processor, Squarespace Payments, giving your customers a more streamlined experience with more ways to pay. And their new invoices feature, allowing you to send proposals, estimates, and contracts all branded just like your website. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez or use code Kelsey Rodriguez at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.